everybody. Thank you for joining me again today at Rewritten Vintage Rescue. And <clears throat> here in the Midwest today, it's it's kind of chilly. It's windy, but it's sunny, and that gets you excited for gardening and homemaking and spring cleaning. And so I thought we would talk about some of that today. Um, I follow some really great YouTubers, and one of them, uh, she used to be called uh, Coffee with Kate. Then she changed her name again um, to, I think it was uh, Life Taoism, something like that. But now she's back to she's drinking coffee. And she talks about homemaking, uh, homesteading. And uh, I also watch uh, Appalachia's Homestead with Patera. And she talks about gardening and homesteading um, in Tennessee. And let me give you a little background on my story. So my husband and I raised three children. We have four grandchildren. And uh, we lived in a house with uh, four bedrooms, full basement, three uh, and a half baths. And um, it was taking every dime we made. Um, so my husband was always trying to get me out of it. Um, but I wanted to wait until the kids were out of school. Um, and once they were, I looked and looked and looked. I knew I wanted some land. I always had a garden, wanted to have a big garden, and wanted to homestead, wanted to can, uh, have a nice pantry. Um, so we did find a place, uh, a little over one acre. Um, and like I said, we went from four bedrooms, three and a half baths, to one bedroom, one bath, uh, one living room, and... Uh, we love it. We love it. And um, I do have plenty of room for a garden. And so with the weather today, just real excited about it. And um, so Coffee with Kate, or she's drinking coffee, um, she often talks about her favorite books that have helped her along the way. And some of her favorite books are also my favorite books. So I thought we would talk about them. One of them was, um, it's called Dear Kitchen Saints. And it's by Connie Holtquest. Um, and what I like about this is she had written into a Christian magazine. Uh, at that time, it was uh, emails, I believe. And she was sending encouraging words to women who were staying home with their children and homemaking. Now, Connie had it rough. Her husband was uh, a drinker and a womanizer. He wasn't home very much, and she was raising the kids on her own. But uh, she found joy in the smallest things and did her best and reused, recycled, and um, whatever resources she had to make a happy home. And her words are really relevant for us today, too, with what we're going through with the pandemic and shortages in the grocery stores. And so the, out of this whole book, my favorite part of it is the very first chapter um, and it's called Barefoot in the Garden. Um, so I thought I'd just read just a little bit uh, to kind of get us in the gardening mood. Um, she said, Dear Sisters of the Land. Don't you love that? That's what we are, Sisters of the Land. Yesterday I didn't get any quiet time to write in my garden journal or write down my garden dreams. Today I plan to cook this morning and get something in the oven and out of the way so that I can make a mess with my papers and gardening books this afternoon. That, that sounds like us, doesn't it? Soon as uh, February's over, we're ready to look in our gardening books and start planning what we're gonna grow. In the spring, after the garden is tilled, I love to plant my beans in the rain. Barefoot, of course. That part really hit me because as soon as the weather warms up, you'll never find shoes on my feet. <laughs> um, when I take Marshall Dillon out in the morning, I'm barefoot, um, and I walk around barefoot all day. There's just something about feeling the earth under your feet um, that just, it's a wonderful feeling. It's good for you, too. It uh, builds up your immune system. I make a long furrow with my hoe, uncover the earth, and drop my bean seeds in one by one. Then with my right foot, I toss the dirt over the top. Then I step down on it, and next, I toss my left foot and step on that, walking backwards down the row. 
As I put my seeds in the furrow, the rain sprinkles each seed. I love to plant a garden in the rain. The earth is so yielding and forgiving. It's like us when we weep and we are so vulnerable. We invite precious seeds from the Lord into our hearts, tender hearts, forgiving hearts, and so precious to Jesus. Isn't that just, that's just the sweetest thing. And now every time I plant beans, I'm like, oh, I want it to rain so I can do it in the rain. But I just love that. I can't explain what it's like for me to put my garden in. Um, now I'm a little picky. I like to have straight rows. Um, I don't just dig a furrow and then cover them with my feet, but um, it truly is a time to bond with the earth. And if you believe in a higher spirit, which I do, um, with God, um, getting your hands dirty and working and seeing something in the dirt and growing that you did. And then there's nothing more rewarding than taking that and making something out of it that's useful. It's, it's just so rewarding. That's why children love it so much, too, uh, children's gardens, because they see something from start to finish. They had to work on it, and then they can use it for something that's useful. So there's a lot of really good chapters in this book, uh, but that was my favorite, and I wanted to share that one with you. Um, and then I wanted to show you, this is my, when we first moved here, um, I just took an old notebook and I wanted it to look rustic. So I took an old paper bag and I got it wet and wrinkled it up and then let it dry and covered this little notebook. And then I'll decorate it later in the front. But I started keeping track right away of my garden, how I wanted it laid out. Um, and any pictures that kind of inspired me of things that I had planted. I wrote down when I planted my seeds inside so I wouldn't forget. Um, and then I would know how to do things differently uh, the next year to improve. I also started uh, cutting out pictures of the different type of birds that we have that I've seen out on our bird feeders, the different kinds of trees that we have in our yard and what I want to have in our yard, different goals that I have for myself. So it's like a vision book, uh, a vision poster, if you've ever seen those. But it's a diary and then what you would like to have further on, but you learn from it based on what you've done before. I thought this was really, really neat. It's for bees and bugs and things that you can make out of your yard and put together a little house. So I wanna try those this summer. And then all of the birds, we have wild turkeys out here. And then I wanted to plant plants that would attract monarch butterflies. So I wanted to make sure that I knew about them. I had to learn about them first and I didn't wanna forget the information. Uh, by the way, they like really bright colors, tubular flowers. So you might want to do something like this too. Just when you're putting your garden out this year, write it down. Write down where you planted what, how did it do, what could you learn from it, what do you want to do next year, what kind of birds do you have in your area, what kind of recipes did you make this year. And you know what, you're going to sit back on a snowy day or rainy day or with your grandkids and they're just going to love looking at this. Uh, one thing I learned, let me tell you a couple things I learned uh, last year that I'm going to do differently this year. One, um, I messed around with my pumpkins too much. I'm too, I'm too picky. So I planted pumpkins, I planted squash, and they turned out beautifully on the vine. And they were growing and they were gorgeous. So I couldn't, I couldn't leave them alone. No, I needed it to look pretty. So <laughs> I'd go out there and pull my weeds and pull my weeds and move them here, move them there. Well, you shouldn't do that. I found out after reading because they suck into the ground and they go deeper and deeper and deeper. And that's where they get the water. And that's what helps them when they start drying out. Well, I was moving them from place to place to place. So they didn't get the nutrients and the vitamins and the watering and that kind of thing that they needed. So if you're going to play pumpkins, um, squash, watermelon, leave them alone. <laughs> Plant them, leave them alone. Let the weeds get in there. It doesn't matter. They'll do even better. The people that live down the street from me, they, they have a pumpkin farm. They throw them out and that's it. That's all they do until it comes harvest time. So don't worry about it being pretty. Just plant them and go. Um, this is one of my favorite 
uh, books to get seeds out of, and it's called Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. And if you write to them, you can Google them. You write to them, they'll send you this absolutely gorgeous uh, catalog of pictures and heirloom seeds. And if you're wondering what an heirloom seed is, it's a seed that hasn't been developed in any way. It's, it's a pure seed. And there are a lot of people who uh, collect those and save those and share them with others. Uh, because a lot of the seeds that you get at the store, those have been um, genetically messed with in some way. So an heirloom seed is a true seed. And uh, one of the good crops I had last year was I wanted to, I have a Native American history in my family. And so I wanted to honor them. I planted a whole lot of Indian corn and it just did wonderfully. And so, uh, of course, we used it for fall, for decorating. But I also made uh, these necklaces for all my kids for Thanksgiving. They were real easy to make. And we might do that in the fall. I'll, sh I'll show you how I did it. But this is something really nice, too. When I get to miss in my garden, I can put it on and feel it. And I grew these myself. And it's it just makes you feel really special and it puts you, it connects you with your ancestors. Uh, they don't have to be Native American. A lot of uh, my ancestors were poor farmers. So it just, it just gets you back in touch with your ancestry. So this year, what I want to get uh, from Baker's Creek is I want to get the gem corn, Indian corn, which is supposed to be a real shiny type of Indian corn in various colors. So I'll let you know how that turns out. Um, I think I'm going to forego the pumpkins and stuff this year and just rely on my neighbor. But I want to plant a lot more uh, Indian corn, less cherry tomatoes, more tomatoes, some sweet corn, some peppers. I made the best salsa this year. It was really, really good. So, you know, I'm learning as I go. And then um, another book you might enjoy that I've, that I've heard, uh, she's drinking coffee, talk about is the Tight Wad Gazette, which I had this back in the 80s. It was, it, this is old. Amy Decision was her name. Um, and Amy was on the uh, Phil Donahue show. <laughs> Shows you how old we are. And she uh, didn't work at the time. Her husband worked. They had, I think, three or four kids. And she believed in frugal lifestyle. And so she is an artist. And she also liked to write, so she put all of this together in a newsletter, and it just went bonkers. So if you get one of these today, some of the hints in today's world are a little hokey. You know, we, we really wouldn't do them. Um, and Amy was really, really good at figuring out percentages, and is it worth it for you to do this, really, when you can go to the store and buy it for this? So there's a lot of good information in there, but... I love reading about frugality, um, minimalism, and how not to waste uh, things and save money. And we're going to talk a lot about that on my channel too. So, but I want to going back to my story. I just want to encourage anyone, no matter what your age, if you're struggling. If uh, in the case of my husband and I, we weren't struggling so much, but uh, we knew we didn't want to work forever. And so in order to do that, we had to really start building up the retirement fund, which meant downsizing. And when we downsized, we got rid of so much stuff and it is so uh, rewarding to do that. You start going through things as, as you're packing them and you're thinking, I only want, number one, since we're in such a small place now, I only want the things I absolutely love. And that means something to me and I really can't part with or live without. And I started finding I had a whole lot of bedrooms and rooms that were filled with decorations uh, that didn't really mean anything to me. I thought they were pretty. Uh, they filled up a wall. They made the house look really nice. But as far as meaning something to me, not really. So... We donated those things. We had several sales. We uh, gave away a lot of things. And you'll find that so rewarding to do spiritually. Um, and now that we're in the smaller place, before I bring anything in, I have to have a place for it. 
And when I bring it in, if I don't have a place for it, I have to get rid of something <laughs> so that it'll fit uh, or that I really love it. But I'm also outside most of the time in the warmer weather. So the inside, I just want to be warm, cozy, dry, and uh, be able to do some crafting, some reading, some cooking, and uh, that's about it. So I don't have to be surrounded by so many things now that my children are grown. So um, that's what I wanted to talk about today. I, I want you guys, you know, um, she had said, Connie Holtquist has a, a channel in, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, a chapter in her book where she talks about building up mother's uh, books, recipe books, mother's library. And I want you to, I, I want to encourage you to do that. Find your favorite books uh, and write down your favorite recipes, make copies. You don't have to go buy the books. Go to the library, borrow them from your friends, make your own notebooks and the things that are special to you so that you don't forget. Make a gardening book out of just an old notebook and a paper bag. Write down what is important to you and what you want to learn from and your recipes that you can pass on to other people. And get going on your gardening. Pick out your seeds. You don't have to live on a farm. You don't have to have an acre. Uh, the place that we came from, I don't even think it was a quarter acre. I don't even know. It was small. small. It was in a subdivision. And I always had a garden. <laughs> always. Um, so it's it's just so meaningful to have. And you learn. You can learn as you go. And we'll, we'll go through those things those things together. Start saving your eggshells. Start saving your coffee filters. They're good for the soil. And uh, start building a compost. Get you a little coffee can. When you eat breakfast in the morning, your banana peels, uh, your bread heels, your eggshells, your coffee, any, anything like that that you're going to throw away your food waste, put them in a coffee can. At the end of the week, take them out to your garden and dump them. It's great. The ground will love it. I hope you guys had a sunny day too, and I hope you'll join me again, and we'll just come up with another exciting topic. I love having you guys to talk to. Have a great week.